Well, this is the back of the Rockwell hardness tester. And you can see that I have labeled this weight stack right here. All Rockwell testers will have a stack of weight, unless it's a more exotic Rockwell tester that uses a load cell and actuator with a closed loop system that's a lot more accurate, but really out of the price range of most knife makers, you know, starting anywhere from five to six thousand dollars, which just there's a lot of other better stuff you can buy as a knife maker. But you can see this weight stack that we have right here. And in total, this applies the 150 kilograms of force for Rockwell Test C. You can see that these weights are not actually totaling up to 150 kilograms of force. They actually total up to about 6 kilograms. So it actually multiplies this 6 kilogram total stack right here by 25 with mechanical advantage with this lever arm that we have right here. And so we only have 6 kilograms of force, but it's multiplied by that. So we have this dial here and these levers will engage. So for HRB, HRE, or HRD, which are things we don't use in knives, that would give you a 100 kilogram stack right here of force. But if we decided to do HRA, which might be something I would try out because HRA is something used for really, really hard materials like carbide and things like that you're only using 60 kilograms of force, or 2.5 kilograms multiplied by 25 with the mechanical advantage. But all of the Rockwell testing is going to be with all those disengaged, because for knives we use HRC. But realistically, HRC realistically tops out at about 68, 70. So if you were testing things in the 75 to 80 Rockwell range, you would want to be doing HRA with the 60 kilograms of force and the diamond cone indenter. So you got a lot of complex stuff back here, but it's pretty simple. This right here is a piston. Uh, they also call it a dash pot, and it's filled with oil and it works like a dampener. Uh, so the idea is that when we load the machine, it slows down that weight stack from being transmitted to that diamond indenter uh, so that you don't worry about damaging or breaking that very, very hard and brittle diamond uh, penetrator. Once it's loaded, you then release it, and that's when you get your reading. Uh, what we have here is what's called an oil carpet. And so it's a little furry guy, call that an oil carpet right there. We fill this up with a uh, number 32 machine oil. And what they mean by that inside the instruction manual is ISO 32 oil, which is about a 10 weight motor oil that you would put inside here. Now, this right here is for adjusting the speed at which the force is applied. And we want the force to be about six seconds. So if we count here, we'll go ahead and we'll load. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. So about six seconds we have on there. And that's where we want that to be. And so we can twist this right here. If we twist it to the left, it will speed it up if we loosen it. If we tighten it, it will slow it down. Uh, just make small adjustments. And the reason why you don't want it to go too fast is because if it goes too fast, it'll ruin your diamond penetrator, and those can cost about 350 bucks. So you really want to take good care of that. Go ahead and we'll unload. Shaboomy. As you can see, man, we are saturated with oil. We've just run this piston. Uh, without anything loading on there yeah, and the idea is you want to get all the air out of the piston or dash pot dampener whatever you want to call it and so that you can see that your oil carpet is saturated with oil so we'll unload that and again I'll show you guys we've got our oil needle that's what this dial is called your oil needle we've got that set for six seconds here let's go ahead and load and check the time again 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. There we go. So it looks like the dash pot. We got enough oil in there. We've gotten all the air out of the system. You can see the machinery at the front there. You know, not all Rockwell testers are set up like this. This is just for an HR 150A, which is like a probably the most popular, most copied model. A lot of the Chinese models and stuff like that, they have this guy. This is a Chinese model as well, made by Grizzly. 
and they have a two lever setup. Uh, if you're used to something like a Wilson hardness tester, it's only going to have one lever. But how this works is one of these levers, the lever on the far side here, because we're looking at it from the back side, so it'd be closest to the operator, him using it. You would pull that towards the operator if he's standing in front of the machine, and that basically loads the system. And then once it stops moving on the needle up front there, and the lever stops moving, you pull this guy, and you push it, actually, if you're on the operator side. And that unloads it, and that gets your reading. We did have to play with the oil needle a little bit. Out of the box, we were running about 8 seconds, and yeah, we want to be closer to 6. Uh, when fine-tuning this guy, I had it at 3. I was really scared there that I could have damaged my diamond. Pulled out my diamond, double-checked it. Looks like we're good to go. So, don't want to go faster than 5 to 6 seconds on this. So we can see up here, this right here is called the regulation plate, this black plate right here. This middle guy right here is called the pin screw. What the pin screw does is that adjusts where your needle lines up, if it's true or not. All right, looks like we are 64 and a half. First one was 64, so keep moving this bracket back, the regulation plate, and make sure that the pin needle's keeping it at C. Rather tedious, but we're going to keep on going and adjusting until we have the 61 reading on our block. Now, anytime you move these, it'll move the needle uh, just because you're going to be moving it. This one in the middle with the lock nut, that actually adjusts the needle. There's like a shaft down here uh, that's connected to this arm that's connected to the dial. The dial's just held in by this one lock screw right here. But yeah, we're going to adjust this guy here. We loosen these guys up when we slide it more forward to increase. You go all the way back to lower. And this middle guy, uh, you play with that uh, to adjust the needle. So yeah, I loosened them up, slid it more forward, tightened them back down. Hopefully this will do it. Uh, I might have to go back and forth for the fine tuning. Uh, when you mess with those, and you could see it throws this guy off. So it's kind of a kind of a pain in the ass because you have to pull out a socket set. I got a pair of a what is it a nine thirty second deep well socket, and you come in here. So I can do this through the camera here, and you want to loosen this guy. And when you loosen it, anytime you move it, they kind of move together, and then you can twist this guy freely. And so as you twist and turn this guy, it'll adjust it. And you want it on the center, but then when you tighten down this middle nut, it'll change where it's uh, where it's at on there. So you have to compensate for that. So, I mean, it comes with these pretty nice screwdrivers. Like, this is a small one. It comes with a large one and a small one. Use the small one for this, and you want to stick this guy. And you can see here, you want to twist it over, because when we tighten it with the 932nd deep well, and we'll switch to tightening. And as we tighten it, oh, look at that, it jumps over, but we're not all the way tight. And so when I tighten it down, shit, look at that. So you really got to go back and forth. It's a pain in the ass, but that's just what you have to do.